heard the acronyms VR and AR before. If you're like us, you might be saying, yes, but I'm really not sure what each of those really means. Is there even a difference? Uh, and then like us, you might also be wondering whether they have a place uh, in the toolkit for enablers of change. So today we're exploring VR and AR. So let's start with virtual reality or VR. This is an immersive, interactive, computer simulated experience. That means it's like you're in a different world. Usually you need a headset, a handheld controller, and sometimes other equipment that allows you to be able to do things in the simulation. There's a couple of different types of headset that we can use for VR. One is a standalone headset where you don't have to be connected to another device. The second is a PC-based headset, which as the name suggests, connects to a computer via a long cable. I've actually had a go at VR, John. I went along to a presentation at a learning group here in Christchurch, and they've been working with VR to develop hospital training scenarios. So when you put on the headset, you were transported into a hospital room, and you could see things that might need doing or might need to be done, and you could do them in the simulation with the controller. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> Of course, many of you might have also had experience in VR if you've been to somewhere like Time Zone. Um, again, John, I went along with some colleagues and we were all able to get hooked up via individual headsets. Um, and these were PC based headsets because they, they, had, um, they were connected to the computer. Uh, and the controllers in the form of guns were used to hit particular targets. But I have to confess, John, I was pretty terrible at it. <laughs> Ah, well done, Denise. I haven't been that adventurous yet. So that's VR. Augmented reality or AR is slightly different. AR doesn't take you out of your surroundings, but as the name suggests, overlays digital content so it appears to be part of our environment. For AR, we usually don't use a headset, but we use smartphones or tablets to put 3D objects into our surroundings. I have to admit, John, that the first thing that popped into my head about AR was the Pokemon craze, uh, where you used your smartphone to find different creatures in the environment. Um, I didn't ever get into this, but if you were caught up in that, then you'll be quite familiar with AR. Uh, yes, I remember seeing people wandering around the local parks playing Pokemon Go. So now that we've explained VR and AR, we'll explain how these can be used in extension. You might have guessed that training situations seem to be the most obvious opportunity for this technology. There's a few reasons for this, and we thought it was worth exploring them. Uh, the first is that VR and AR provide greater interactivity with the learning content. Using VR means that learners can do hands-on learning in a structured and interactive way. That's the kind of work that I mentioned earlier, using VR to help train health professionals. If you're interested in more details of this, we've added a link to a master's thesis um, completed on this topic back in 2011 here in Christchurch at the University of Canterbury. It's worth noting that they did explore the limitations of this technology, um, so it's not all a full steam ahead to a brave new world. <laughs> wow, Aldous Huxley would be disappointed, Denise, and especially as that book was published 90 years ago. Anyway, the second reason is that VR and AR offer higher levels of engagement and participation, so there's greater learning by doing. This in turn can have a positive impact on knowledge uptake and retention, as well as promoting confidence. A third reason is safer learning environments, which is actually pretty critical. Denise, you had the opportunity last year to hear a presentation from Kiwi Rail, who faced exactly this problem. They wanted to be able to train locomotive drivers all across the country, but needed access to yards and locomotives. They are finding this more and more of a problem. Again, if you're interested, you can read more background in a short paper by Philip O'Connell and the link is in the show notes. But anyway, the ongoing hazardous environment they needed to put learners into meant that this was a key part of the reason for starting to explore VR. 
Kiwi Rail have put together a cool short video that shows a snippet of what they've been able to develop using VR for training. And we've included a link to that in the show notes as well. Another reason is improved extension experience. Sometimes concepts can be complex, abstract, or difficult to explain, and we can all have trouble understanding concepts through explanations alone. AR and VR solutions help make concepts simpler through interactive visual visualization and allowing participants to learn by doing. The fifth and final reason is that you can get better learning outcomes because you're combining a series of things that help make learning more effective. There's learning by doing, the ability to explore a range of scenarios, and also because it's enjoyable. Thanks, Denise. Those were five good reasons how VR and AR can help in training situations. But perhaps you're wondering what's happening in this space from an agricultural perspective. There are a few examples out there that we thought were interesting. The first is VR videos, like this one from Meat and Livestock Australia, who put together um, a story of Australian lamb production. And again, we'll have the link in the show notes. Another VR example is from Oregon State University, who developed a VR soil lab. And again, the link is in the show notes. In terms of AR, the main use has been adding an extra dimension uh, to publications, signage, or other types of passive content. This adds dynamic content and provides extra information. There's an example of this in the Wimmera Mallee in Victoria, where they use AR to highlight astonishing artwork on display throughout the region. Again, we'll put a link in the show notes for you. Um, this technology is starting to move into agriculture and it seems seems to have real potential to be helpful for extension and enabling change. The final benefit that we'd like to mention is that they provide measurable results. Uh, we can easily track how many people watch the videos, uh, saved photos or other actions undertaken. This allows us to monitor our results in real time. Uh, those silos looked great, Denise. We've just had a platypus mural painted here in Hobart, and I wish they had thought to incorporate AR in it. Other options for using these technologies in extension, especially AR, are in creating awareness or being able to do flipped learning before an activity. An example of this is the virtual RAM created by Think Digital and showcased at a RAM sale in 2019. Again, we'll put a link in to the video and an article about this in the show notes. As the creator says, you could open up a sales catalogue and the RAM appears on your dining room table. You can explore its size and other characteristics and then make an informed decision about whether you want to attend the RAM sale and purchase a particular RAM or not. That's pretty cool, John. So you can see why marketers are embracing this type of technology as well. Uh, we'll include a link to a blog on this. And there are some cool examples like Yorkshire Tea from the UK, who've used AR to promote their tree planting campaign uh, to different audiences. Ah, thanks, Denise. And we'd like to say a huge thanks to Nasser Zamani, who is the founder and manager of Creativity Tech, as he provided with us with most of the material to be able to put this episode together. Creativity Tech is one of Australia's leading providers of mixed reality and particularly augmented reality services. And NASA has a background in agricultural extension. If you'd like to check out the work that NASA has been involved with, you'll find the link in the show notes. Thanks, Nessa. And well, you've heard our thoughts. Now we'd like to hear yours. Add a comment below the blog post and tell us whether you've tried putting VR or AR to work for you. We'd love to hear about your experiences and the tips and pitfalls of this technology. We really don't want this just to be a one-way conversation. So please join in by sharing your thoughts and ideas with us. Thanks, folks, for joining us on this Enablers of Change episode. Remember to subscribe to our newsletter if you'd like to know when new episodes are available. And hey, if you liked what you heard, please tell your friends so they too can join the conversation. All the best until we meet again.